We are with Rich Armstrong today. He is a senior editor of Vote US magazine. Rich, and today we're going to talk about oh, gas, fuel, prices. Um, what are they going to do to us, man? What's this season going to be like? I tend to be optimistic in long term and thinking, uh, yeah, the gas prices have, have jumped up and I just did some research because, you know, with this Ukrainian Russian situation, none of the experts know what's going to happen uh, in terms of gas prices. But I can tell you what trends are. And, and, and I was just on the AAA website um, this morning and, it, and gas is now averaging 423. This is more for cars, 423 per gallon for a regular. Now, that's 70 cents more than a month ago. And a dollar thirty six more than we were paying this time last now, year. Now we're taping in this early spring two thousand twenty two, for reference. So yeah. hopefully, if you're watching this in six months, price uh, gas prices are back to down to two bucks at the marina. Do you think? What do you think? <laughs> I don't think that, and, and I'm and I'm certainly no expert to talk about the politics or right. global energy market, um, mm -hmm. and I don't know how it works, but. I, the EIA, which is a government agency, it's the Energy Information Administration, it's supposedly an independent statistical analysis department. Uh, and they've got a website, e EIA.gov, and they give you the forecasts and, and uh, on, on what they expect. Now, they're basing it on crude oil. Um, right. And in this summary, they say, we don't know how this whole Russia Ukraine thing is going to work out and our prediction is qualified on that but um they are predicting 371 average get per gallon in the second half of this year so, so how does that relate so 371 at the auto pump typically the pump. how much higher is the marina is there is there a sort of a base or a scale for that the, i was always i've always found one dollar more could right. be two depending on where and what, what marina you're at. But voters just factor in, add a dollar um, to whatever you're getting. Yeah, I would, I would say that's about right. That makes sense. Sure, add a buck. And keep in mind, I think most voters are trailer voters. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and and they, the rules don't apply to them because they can just stop at, at the uh, roadside gas station. And the problem there is you're going to get your 10% ethanol Right. which I, I don't know if the audience knows, but it, it, it damages uh, some of the rubber components in the engine of older engines. Uh, this yeah, is take, irrelevant take, to you. Very good point. Very good point. So the fuel that you're getting at the regular pump, if you trail your boat, is different from the fuel that you're getting at the marina? Not usually. Um, it, All right. It, it's... It, it has ethanol, which is corn, and it's um, it's done for whatever reasons. Um, but um, they increase the ethanol. The federal government increased the ethanol level uh, ten percent, and then they were talking they're talking about fifteen percent ethanol, which our scientists in the industry have shown just corrode the rubber yeah. gunkings of the of engines, yeah. and we've written about that story. But yeah, so sure a lot enough. of and, 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 and a boat sitting off season, it's on the hard. That ethanol is just and that's a podcast for another day. We talk about sort of how you should treat your fuel yeah. systems when you're on the hard. And yeah, my point was just that you can. Some people seek out marinas because you can get at some marinas ethanol free gas, which you'll never okay. see on the roadside. Okay, good point. So three seventy one per gallon at the end of uh, twenty twenty two, and you can hold the e the United States Energy Information Administration accountable for that prediction. So it's, uh, it's we coming all down that, already. Yeah, we all know that COVID was a boating boom, right? Boom. Uh, COVID boating was certainly one of the very few pluses. Um, that happened out of the COVID situation because people voted. Do you, you don't think this uh, fuel prices will take the wind out of the sails, so to speak, do you? No. Um, on the COVID thing, just something re real cool, just being an insider. Um, and uh, when COVID hit, the industry 
was totally blindsided. I was blindsided. I mean, mm-hmm. we all expected an, a, a crash of 08 cycle, which killed the boating industry, right. drove them out of it. And so the industry was expecting to, to buckle down. And instead, people quickly realized the boat on the water was the safest way to social distance. Right. And sure was. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, both the, the existing boaters, our members knew this, but it, a lot of newbies uh, just jumped right on it. And, and really, at that point in 2020, we were all pretty desperate. So yeah. impulse buying probably happened uh, for people who had never boated. And but it was a way to escape, and um, it hasn't slowed down yet, uh, according to the industry. They can't build boats fast enough. I mean, yeah. you can't go to a – if you're going to a boat show this year, that boat sitting there has already been sold, which is unusual. Yeah, and I again. think, oh. you know, and we've talked to people in the industry about this and dealers and the like and, and those who boat, marina owners – and they, they, as I, I feel the same way that boaters are going to boat. You know, they might spend more time at the slip or at, at, the, at the dock or at the mooring this year. But boaters boat, man. Those who love it, love it. And those who got in just for the quick hit, um, for something to do last season, will probably get out anyways. You know? But, but uh, yeah, man, we're boaters and we like I to boat. A- in 08, I was writing about the crash and how it affected the industry. And, and at that point, I was writing those exact stories. What are you doing? Well, I'm staying closer to home or I'm putting off the big cruise we had planned. Or I'm just keeping it at the dock and it's become a little mm-hmm. cocktail place for us. So people, the boaters will adapt. Um, right. But you're right. They're going to evolve. They, I'm, you wouldn't be a boater if you did the math. I mean, anybody that boats knows it doesn't make economic sense. But it, yeah, yeah, I never. I, I say that all the time. Never do the division. What does my boat cost yeah. me every season divided by how many times I use it? Yeah, let's not go there. Or certainly don't do it in I, front of your wife. That's for sure. No. <laughs> or your husband, yes, I know. if you're the woman on the boat. <laughs> that's for sure. So. Uh, I, I mean, what's your sense? What's your sense? Is this just? Is this a play? Is this a? I hate to use the term coming off of COVID, but is this the new normal for gas prices? Or do you think it'll have a dip back to one seventy nine or two bucks? And I know you're not you're not an expert in that industry, but what's your sense say? I don't think you're gonna see two dollars again. Um, all I read was that when the economy was struggling was that they were trying to artificially suppress the price of gasoline. And I don't know who pulls controls the levers to that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But from what I've read from experts, we, it was artificially low. And I, but when this started, when this spike happened, I remember reading headlines, we're going to see $5 a gallon for gas. And what, I, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean by artificially low? I don't know how they, like, it, mm. I suppose, I suppose it involves controlling the flow. You know, they can, oh, they yeah, can open sure. the flow. I'm sure the the oil guys have their ways of controlling the price to some degree, mm. but I don't think uh, this is my pr- honest opinion. And I think we peaked, and I think it's going to slowly come down, and we'll be under th- in the threes somewhere, That's mid to high threes. And can yeah, you I live mean, with that? You know, yeah, America, yes, yeah. You know what? If you go back to the marina bar, right, and a cup of chowder has gone up two bucks, you go, all right, spend the other two bucks and give me a couple more drinks. I mean, if you're into boating, it's just all part of the uh, part of the game. That's for sure. Yes, it is. And, and it's a great lifestyle. And, and if you can afford it, there's nothing better. So do you think any power boaters will go over to sail? <laughs> I love to ask that question. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no way. Uh, well, I, as I said, I, I have been writing, I've become a recreational boat since 1998. Right. And I am hard pressed to ever think of power boat who said, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go I'm sailing. Gonna buy a uh, sailboat. Well, vice versa. Yeah, person, we're just, you know what I mean? Or a, or, or a sail person who says, I kind of like an engine. I want to get out there and get to where I want to go quickly, man. The the best scenario I see for sailors going to power tends to be when they age out, when it's just. Right. Because, you know, it's a lot harder to, to yeah. sail and to yeah, steer sure a power is. boat. Yeah. And, and they tell me, when I talk to these older couples usually, and they're, they're, they're selling their sailboat reluctantly, and they're picking up. They like these little pocket trawlers. Um, yeah. Uh, 
you know, you see the small trawlers and um, eight or ten they, knots they, out there just cruising along, not uh, wearing a lot of they, they, they have no sudden interest in going fast. I think I might be hitting that age because I've got uh, three um, 20 something young adult sons, and whenever I'm on the boat with them at the helm, I'm like, slow it down, would you slow it down? Let's take it easy, let's take yeah. it easy. Yeah, I'm a power boater. I mean, I'm happy at 20, 20 miles an yep. hour and just cruise along. And I, I, it's, I'm lazy, but that's what I grew up with, and that's what I know. What can we yeah. do to save on fuel? You know, what are, what are some of the tips? What are some of the best ways? To, and how do you figure out, you know, there's always talk about, um, you know, gallons per hour. And how do, you, how do you gauge it? How do you do some math on it? And what can we do to, uh, to be more efficient with our fuel use? Okay, well, um, first, I, you know, it's funny when you ask that. So we have our archives of stories, and we're always writing these types of stories. And the funny thing is, I couldn't find a Boat US article on dedicated to how to save fuel. Uh, we've done really? it piecemeal with tips, little of this or that, but, but nothing totally comprehensive. And probably because it's a lot of little things. But yeah. Let me give you a sneak, a breaking exclusive. Uh, I'm going to look into uh, a fuel saving tip story for Boat US. All so right. Maybe that will be in for sure. And, and I don't, uh, you know, we, we don't miss Boat US magazine. That's for sure. We love that magazine. We uh, we dive into that thing. Your articles are great. You guys do a great job with that piece. That's our bread and butter is helping you yeah. enjoy your boat better and safer. So shoot. So how do we measure gallon per hour? What's the best way to deal with that measurement? Yeah, the good thing is, well, again, the newest is the best. So the new outboards have that digital display right on somewhere on the uh, on the engine. Uh, say 100 horsepower and up, you can expect to see a readout right on your helm. It's coming right from the engine. Right. Um, but, but if you have an older boat, and, and that's what most people have. Yeah, exactly. The way to do it. Is, is to fill the tank and I mean, don't overflow it, but fill it to the top and and then head out running. And, and the key is you want to hold a steady speed. So say your cruising speed is 40, 4,500 RPM and you want to know your burn rate at that. Run it for at least if you can do 15 minutes, the more time you run it, the better more accurate you're going to get. But if you can run to 15 minutes, and even if it's just running up the river and running back or zigzagging across the lake, but you want to try to keep, keep that consistent speed as much as long as you can. Get back, gas up, you, and, and then you know how many gallons it is. Now, you probably, it's going to be in fractions or decimals, but to down to the des decimal or fraction, how much fuel did you use? 1.2 gallons. Multiply that by the number it takes to extend your cruise to one hour. So let's say you did 15 minutes. You would multiply that number by four to get to 60 minutes. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. That's true. Sure. Absolutely. So, so if, for example, if you burn five gallons while cruising for 30 minutes, you multiply that by two and you're burning 10 gallons per hour. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. If you ran 15 minutes, multiply that by four to get 60 minutes. And then you should um, use that number to determine how many drinks you have at the marina bar that evening, right? <laughs> I mean, that should have a direct correlation to that, I would guess. Get out. Well, you'll have house. maybe you're. Maybe you're pleasantly surprised if you're only burning three gallons an hour or five or ten. Yeah, um, maybe. And then once you have your gallons per hour, you can divide the average speed for your cruise. So say it's 4,500 RPM you were running. You divide that average speed by your gallons per hour, which I think we said 1.2 1. or whatever. Right. And, and that will give you your miles per gallon. So if you cruise, if your cruise speed was 20 miles an hour, divide that by the gallons per hour, and that's your miles per gallon. Okay. That's, that'll, that'll make it feel more car-like. You know, mm -hmm. Boaters measure gallons per hour burn. Sure. Cars measure miles per gallon. 
So um, all the basics, I guess, on how you can conserve, right? I mean, uh, ease up the speed, maybe run a little slower, less RPMs. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of little things that accumulate. Um, the only magic bullet is repower. Get yourself one of these great new outboards, and those things yeah. are just yeah. miraculous. Yeah. Their efficiency. That, that's, you know, an old outboard. If you get a 20 year old outboard on, the, although you'd have to, here's some more division, right? All right, I've got my yeah. 20 year old outboard. I own it. Um, am I going to spend 60000 for a new one? Divide that by, and uh, how much fuel, it is, <laughs> right? <laughs> and away you go, I guess. Right. Well, that's what voters do. You, you do the math, yeah. and it doesn't make sense. And, uh, it's never pleasant. The math never works out pleasant. Well, and, and you know, you always do the math on like Monday or Tuesday. And then Friday yeah. comes, you do that little gas check. You say, okay, how can I conserve fuel? And by Saturday afternoon, you're not even thinking about it, you know, because you're just having such a great time. It is what it is, you know. Yeah, I think for if you want to save, you know, if you're concerned, if you're serious about saving, you, you have to be proactive. Um, mm -hmm. um, be, have your prop and your engine tuned up by a pro every year. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, you know, I'll, I'll skip it. I'll skip this year. But, you know, a lot of people do that. The, mm -hmm. the, you know, the engine and the prop will get you more efficiency. You know, and, and, and little every little thing in a prop, I mean, those things really have to be perfect to be optimal. And every little thing, you might yeah. brush off, but you don't know what happened down below. So, um, or a nice, take smooth, care of that. a nice, smooth hull, you know. Take a look at that hull, and if if you can haul it yourself, take it out, give it a good wash down, make sure it's nice and smooth. You know, even if you're at a marina, you can get that thing on a trailer. And most likely this season, you if if you're trailering and you're at a marina, if you trailer both sides, you're probably going to pull it and fuel up at the local um, gas station, anyways. Yeah, Why wouldn't you, right? You know. But the ugly truth for saving money is the hard the hardest work. Clean your hull, right? Uh, algae barnacles, all that stuff yeah. to get stuck on it, and it, mm. and it and it goes quick, as you know. Yeah, you put yeah. it in the water, and, sure. Uh, so if you can, if you can, if it's in the water, you can get a brush under there, scrub it. Um, obviously, you know, do a good clean off season, but that's gonna all that surface area creates drag, makes your engine work harder, slows your boat down. Uh, keep a hull, keep your hull clean, and that's that's your best one. If you're gonna do one thing, do that. You know, we're gonna talk in an upcoming podcast about electrics, um, but real quick, as as it relates to fuel prices, do you really see the industry jumping at electrics real quick? And is there an infrastructure to support that? Um, at no, marinas, no. Like, you know, now marinas aren't ready for electric. Right. Um, the union, the industry is embracing it. Um, it's been so slow burning. Um, I was talking about electric boats. I was writing about them 15 years ago, but um, it's uh, it's such a niche market, um, and they're just so much more expensive because the technology. You need to sell a lot for the price to come down, and they're just not selling enough. So, and oh, Mercury um, came out with a smaller outboard with sort of a like rechargeable, detachable battery, right? And did you see that at the boat show this year? Yeah, that, yeah, that was a big draw, but it was really just a prop. It, um, I don't know if it was a working engine, but right. they, they don't even have the specs out on that yet. Okay. Um, but it's a pretty cool thing. If you look up the Mercury Avatar, um, it's it's an electric boat. I think the electric outboard, small power. It's supposed to be portable. I think it's more for like dinghies or um, yeah. It's not yeah, sort of primary. Like, yeah, yeah, rechargeable drill, pretty much. I think where they go with that one. I think if you hooked your drill up with one of those like rechargeable batteries, you could probably get somewhere too. You know. Yeah, the news is Mercury's doing it, and they have right. they're the big gorilla, and they can they have the money to make it happen rather than mm -hmm. the small guys. Yeah, so, they didn't Hinkley have didn't Hinkley have an electric a while back? They were working with a little Hinkley runabout or something bringing around a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they were, and I don't know if they kept that up. Um, mm -hmm. Hinkley, for if, though, if you don't know, Hinkley is it like the Rolls Royce yeah. of uh, 
pleasure boats. Um, yeah. You can get into a nice 35 footer for about 800,000. You, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I just assume a million when I see a Hinkley, yeah, um, and they're amazing Beautiful boats. boats. I mean, yeah, they're incredible, incredible, and they were pioneers with that uh, picnic boat from like 20 years ago, yeah. Um, uh, but, um, their, their clientele has the money, so if their clientele and they don't build boats unless they have a buyer. Yeah, one of Hinkley's on. yards is uh, in Portsmouth here, is right down the road from us. And we take a drive down every now and then and they park and, and they have, you know, their their dock outside of that yard has got Hinkley's lined up as far as the eye can see. It's like a, it's like a candy store. They're absolutely beautiful vessels. That's for sure. this is, they're arguably the most beautiful boat on the yeah. water. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I love them. Can't afford them. Right. Yeah, right. So let's, uh, let's kind of wrap this up with some... Uh, <laughs> Some of your quick thoughts on this. So quick tips. So if in like 30 seconds, we could talk about sort of what you expect along the lines of fuel prices and where do you think it's all going to go and what we can do to conserve. Just like a quick snippet and go. Just oh, sort of a recap. Yeah. Just sort of a recap. So to recap, Rich, um, where do you think it's all going for us? Well, I'm no expert on oil and politics and global energy markets, but 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 I do read the experts and, and the government agency, the U.S. Ener energy Information Administration, which is supposed to be an independent statistical analysis mm -hmm. agency. They are predicting that we've peaked uh, on oil prices and it's already starting to decline. And as of today, it's it's four dollars and twenty-three cents on average nationally for a gallon of gas at the pump. They're predicting three dollars and seventy-one cents a gallon by the sec in the second half of this year. Okay. Um, and if so you want to say in fuel, and in California, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not voting in California. That must be California. Yeah, California's not another planet. I think they they yeah. are separate from the United States. Right. Right. But fuel efficiency, if you want to, you know, if, you, if you're worried about the price of fuel, there's no magic bullet. The simple solution is to maintain your engine and prop. Buy a pro. Get a, go to a pro to get it tuned up and, 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 and prop yeah. tuned up. Keep your hull clean. Now, you, get, you, want it, you want it ready to go when you drop it in the water. But during the season, they make brushes. And the algae grows so quick in the northeast, I remember. Um, get, get your, if you have a small boat, get your brush under there. Just, it's real easy brushing, but get rid of the green stuff. And, and that, that builds up over time and that'll save you money over the course of the season. What I like to do is I keep, I keep a brush on board. And sometimes if we're rafting or we're at anchor, I'll just, you know, jump in, take a little swim and do a little brush on the bottom. You know, a little maintenance there is always fun when it's 80 degrees out and the sun's shining, you feel better about doing it. Yeah, it's a good guy thing to keep busy when you sure. get bored sitting at the beach. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, huh? I'm going to scrape the bottom of the boat off. You stay with the kids, yeah. you know. Or, yeah, You'll never have to fight for the so. job. It's a brush in one hand no and a cold one in the other, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can put it right up on the panel. All right, Rich Armstrong. The uh, senior editor at Boat US Magazine. Again, Boat US Magazine is great. We love your work. You've, how long have you been around? I mean, have you been around? But how long has the magazine been around? I feel, I feel like I've been reading it forever. Ah, that's, it's it's a year younger than me. So it's, it was born in 1966, um, and it's it was it was created to be an advocacy group for boaters. So we're I like to use the analogy. We're like the triple A for boating. Right, we both can, we can, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can insure you and we can tow you, we can rescue you, and and we'll and uh, we're an advocate. I mean, we have uh, uh, lobbyists in Washington D.C. fighting for recreational boats. Um, and and I rights. know there's a move. There's a move for Boat U.S. as well to start national training, um, which is amazing. If you ask me. I'm writing a story on that right now. Um, nice. We have a, a foundation has launched a program to just to get to encourage people to get on a boat and try it out with a licensed captain and get comfortable with it to take the fear factor out. Of it. Yeah. Right. 
um, for someone who's never driven a boat. And they give the basics, and hopefully they, it sticks and they love it. So that'll be so a I'll network be of my- licensed captains across the country, much like probably like your, your Towboat U.S. network, right? And those licensed captains sure. will provide training as state-specific as well. Correct. And I know they're, they're, they're opening up some West Coast sites. Um, it's been East Coast centric, but um, we have a guy who's very capable and they expect big things coming from that program. Um, you'll have to look for that probably later yeah. this year. Uh, it'll be an issue of Boat US Magazine, but it's the on water training program from the Boat US Foundation. Um, safety and, and uh, training is, is our creed. That's what we do. Um, sure. So we don't, we pre- we, we're all about safe boating and clean water and, and being smart, being skilled and educated. Right. Rich Armstrong, thank you very much. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Uh, you're doing great stuff. The Drift Podcast can be found at driftsociably.com or where all fine podcasts are heard. Boat US has been looking after the interests of recreational boaters for over 55 years. Our goal? To make boating better, safer, and worry free. From coast to coast and over 600 towboats strong, the Towboat US fleet is the nation's largest. So when you need help on the water, you're not alone. For a day of worry free boating, take us with you by downloading the Boat US app to get a tow or check weather and tides. Better boating starts here. Join today.